потребуватимуть десятиліття, а іноді століття для відновлення. Explosions, shellings and attacks on critical infrastructure have caused irreparable damage. Destroyed ecosystems will require decades, sometimes even centuries to recover. Ці дії не лише завдають шкоди природі, вони підривають основу життя на, на мільйони людей. Війна у поєднанні з екоцитом ставить під загрозу глобальну екологічну стабільність. А uh, these actions not only harm the environment but also undermine the foundation of life for millions of people. War combined with ecocide threatens global environmental stability. Україна закликає світову спільноту визнати дії Російської Федерації на нашій території як екоцит. Ukraine calls on the global community to recognize the actions of Russian Federation on our territory as ecocide. Це має стати прецедентом для міжнародного права, адже захист природи має бути таким самим пріоритетом, як і захист людських прав. This must set as a precedent in international law, because protecting nature must be as much as of priority as defending human rights. Відповідальність за знищення довкілля не повинна залишатися безкарною. Uh, those responsible for destruction of environment cannot go unpunished. Сьогодні ми маємо унікальну можливість об'єднатися у боротьбі за збереження нашої планети. Природа не має кордонів, і те, що відбувається в Україні, є загрозою для всього світу. Uh, today we have a unique opportunity to unite in the fight to preserve our planet. Nature's no no borders, and what is happening in Ukraine poses a threat to the entire world. Закликаю всіх вас зробити все можливе, щоб зупинити екоцид, забезпечити відновлення довкілля та створити умови для стійкого розвитку. Разом ми можемо відновити баланс між людством і природою. I urge all of you to do everything possible to stop ecocide, ensure environmental restoration and create the conditions for sustainable development. Together we can restore the balance between humanity and nature. Сьогодні з нами присутня Громадська організація екології права людини, яка розкаже нам більш детально, як ми можемо це зробити юридично. Тому я запрошую до слова про прямі наслідки та приховані загрози впливу воєнних дій на природні компоненти України старшого аналітика, кандидата географічних наук Катерина Полянську. So Katerina Polanska from uh, Ecological uh, Organization is uh, ready to take the floor. Um, dear participants, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to share our work, uh, our results. I... Uh, can you hear me, please? Uh, tell me. Um, so can you please uh, tell me that, uh, can you hear me clear and, uh, is everything? Uh, dear organizers, can you tell me, can you hear me in the, in the room? Can I start my presentation? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, I will tell about the impact of the military actions on the environment of Ukraine. Um, and this picture, uh, all the pictures uh, in our presentation is from our fieldwork. And this is uh, from the crater after a uh, missile attack in Kiev region. Um, so first part is our objectives, work and team. Um, we are studying the effects of the war because we wanted to identify some risks, uh, analyze uh, the situation, uh, understand how to protect our uh, environment and also understand the risks for the health and life of civilians, risk to the health and life of the soldiers and impact on the all components of, of uh, nature. Also, it's a task of collection evidences, uh, legal part of the issue, a question of ecocide, criteria of ecocide. And uh, the third goal, it's uh, understand how we can clean and restore our territories. Uh, because, uh, yeah, if, uh, if we know the reasons, we can 
find a way how to restore and how to save our nature. Uh, so in the beginning of the war, in the March of uh, 2022, we realized that if we can't uh, fight, we can work, uh, we can use our brains. Um, and uh, we began to remotely collect the facts of crimes uh, on the environment of Ukraine. Uh, then we create uh, APL like database uh, where we put on the map um, uh, the evidences which we found and also cases. Uh, it was different sources for our field trips, also for um, for social media uh, and so on. And uh, next point, it was we realized that we need to provide expeditions like uh, field researches and. On this map, you can see uh, this uh, red and uh, uh, black dots. It's places where we conduct our field researches. It's um, uh, places around, like along the front line and liberated territories uh, where we, uh, like, where we visited uh, nature protection territories and just nature territories which were uh, under the impact of the military actions. Um, uh, let me introduce our team. We work together, like it was EPL team, our uh, director, me, and also uh, our um, researchers from the Academy of Science of Ukraine and Kherson, um, Kherson uh, uh, University. It's uh, Anna Kuzemko, Lena Kravchenko, Ivan Moisienko, uh, Alexander Hodosovtsev, and our favorite director of our favorite national nature park, Sergei Skorik, which help us a lot. Uh, also, uh, there is uh, another part. Uh, another part of our expeditions, like Yakiv Diduk, uh, Mikhail Milenko, Elena Pelich, they also uh, uh, they also uh, conduct researches with us uh, on different in the different parts of Ukraine. Uh, so pollution, demining, and contamination. Uh, as you see on this official map from um, a state um, a state um, emergency service of Ukraine. Uh, this near 30% of Ukraine polluted by explosive objects and affected by the war. Uh, it's uh, if we will compare with the map uh, with the uh, nature uh, nature uh, nature zones of Ukraine, you will see that uh, all nature zones from the north uh, to the south of Ukraine uh, under the impact of the war. It's like forest zone, forest and steep and steep zone, and also uh, Azov and Black Sea. Uh, it's also uh, create, created difficulties uh, with demining because uh, it's much uh, difficult to demine uh, territories which are covered by the forest or steep regions, natural territories. Because as you will see, uh, it's uh, yeah, there is it's not so easy that we can just use the machines uh, for demining because it's uh, rare. It's a places with rare species of animals, rare species of plants. Um, and there is a lot of uh, uh, yet uh, types of um, explosive objects. Sometimes they are visible, like landmines uh, for vehicles. Uh, yeah, and sometimes it's too visible, too much. Uh, and uh, we are talking about not just uh, mining territories. We are talking about pollution with explosive objects. Because sometimes it's uh, unexploded uh, shells and um, different types of them. And this is the pictures from our field trips from Kherson region, from Mykolaiv region, from Donetsk region. And uh, they're dangerous not just because they can explode, they're dangerous because uh, of uh, chemical pollution, physical destruction, and also uh, if you will just leave them, it's also a risk of the corrosion. It's like, um, yeah, so uh, it will be a secondary chemical pollution because uh, it in uh, much more and much more concentrations because uh, it will be um, yeah uh, this uh, from this uh, from this shell and it will be uh, have an impact on soil, water, living organisms, and um, other other components of the nature. Uh, and of course, uh, physical destruction, it depends on the type of the shell. It can be just a small crater uh, from this uh, type of um, 
explosive object and also it can be a crater like this uh, uh, after bombing it it's a picture from Donetsk region from 2022 it's also destruction of our nature and uh, you can imagine how uh, like uh, how many soils we should bring uh, to call this territory these craters uh, it's also different types of soils uh, so different types of craters we are uh, looking for them and yeah and big one one of the biggest it's crater from the uh, missile from the uh, northern Korea uh, it was uh, damaged in uh, uh, February 2024 and you can see, you can see the um, yeah uh, the scale of this crater and territory around damaged us like more than a uh, radius more than 50 meters uh, like total destruction it was a young forest on this place uh, also, it's not just a physical destruction, it's also chemical pollution. And uh, if we will uh, go and uh, and say the creator investigates what inside, it sometimes it, it it's even even visible uh, on the slopes of the crater. These explosive products. Uh, and uh, yeah, some pieces of shrapnel. And uh, for example, after the missile uh, C three hundred, it can be. Uh, like like you, you can see this like small pieces of metal it can be 4500 or 7500 these small pieces it's like source of pollution of our soils of our environment and it's not just physical pollution it's also chemical pollution and we started this research uh, when war started actually in 2014 uh, and our um, our uh, colleagues uh, they uh, took samples from the craters in Donetsk region and then they identified types of craters near Savur Mohila. It was uh, around 14,000 craters and of course and they count like even if we will count like minimal chemical pollution it will be uh, kilograms and even tons of uh, uh, poison materials and like heavy metals and other toxic substances. We uh, continue this research and uh, with uh, when the huge um, invasion started and also uh, started to collect um, soil samples from the creators and uh, together with uh, uh, with the specialists from different laboratories we uh, made a conclusion that each crater uh, dangerous for the environment and life and health of uh, uh, our civilians uh, and uh, our soldiers so we should be very careful with these territories and it should be special um, program to clean these territories uh, how, um, yeah, what is the chemical pollution? Of course, it's with uh, um, heavy metals. And uh, here you can see some results from laboratories. Laboratories, and you can see, uh, compare with the maximum permissible concentrations. It's uh, this column, last column, and uh, first column, it's a result uh, from the craters, from the, uh, from the soils under the burn vehicles, uh, different pollution territories. And you can see the difference like between the maximum and uh, which we have. Uh, and also we received, um, and this is result from the burn vehicle, for example, uh, tank in Kherson region. And you can see the like um, exceeding the maximum permissible concentration of lead, zinc, bor, barium, cadmium, mangan, sulfur. And sometimes you can see like a uh, permissible concentration that's like 30. And result from that place, it's 1,304. Or for example, for another like 200 and 1,700. 190 or having uh, other heavy metals like uh, lead uh, you can see the maximum permissible concentration it's like six or for cuprum uh, it's three uh, or for zinc 23 and you can see the difference it's a huge pollution of our nature and also it's uh, not just like local like small dots it's a cumulative effect because uh, creators like this it's thousands of them sometimes our lands look like moon landscape and uh, there is also thousands of burn vehicles and that's why we have uh, it's uh we, we, that's why we are talking of cases of ecocide of our land 
Uh, it's also consequences for biodiversity. As you know, there is like uh, sound pollution, explosions, uh, animals also died. Uh, they died because of, uh, and on this picture, you can see pieces of uh, two foxes which died because of uh, explosion on the mine. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not just uh, uh, this, uh, it's uh, sometimes it's very difficult to see uh, what happened with creatures. Yeah, but they're dying and uh, a war destroying their uh, habitats and uh, destroying habitats. And sometimes if we are talking more about like mammals, uh, like huge animals, which you can see. Uh, but we are not talking about millions of uh, creatures like microorganisms and small like insects and uh, other small creatures which die. And, like there is thousands of them dying because of fires, forest fires, steep fires, and other impacts of the war. Um, we're also talking about the impact on the rivers and lakes. Uh, these ecosystems, they're also uh, under uh, under attack um, during the explosions. It can be explosion inside of the river and during the bombing and shelling, which uh, destroying and um, killing everything in the uh, water ecosystem. It also can be yeah, mining. Uh, it's, uh, we, we have a problem with uh, uh, pollution with... Um, uh, explosive objects, and we will, will need to provide special uh, demining of the river lake and lakes uh, in Ukraine. And it's uh, it's very difficult because it's very, uh, yeah, it's um, it's very difficult uh, to demine them because uh, uh, they're like uh, the mines they're moving during the floods, and um, it's very dynamic ecosystems. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, chemical pollution of the our our water objects because during the explosions they also uh, it's also chemical pollution of the water with these uh, uh, toxic uh, substances and heavy metals. Uh, next thing it's uh, impact on the black and azo sea as you know we yeah there is also uh, pollution with uh, unexploded objects uh, pollution with mines and there is also uh, military actions uh, in the seas and they um, they bring us chemical pollution uh, they also uh, bring in a huge impact of, on the biodiversity with uh, uh, sounds with um, uh, <clears throat> view, um, big uh, um military boats uh which uh, work in uh um uh, in the in the sea uh, and which send uh uh dozens of uh, missiles on ukraine and we already have an impact on our dolphins uh equitations and uh, uh this on this picture it's uh stuff of um um of the national nature park um and uh there uh ivan rusev and um yeah, with her stuk and uh, Irina, uh, they're uh, looking for for they're looking uh, they observed their uh, beaches uh, and found uh, uh, found dead dolphins uh, uh, dead dolphins on on the seashore, and um, yeah, for them it's uh, also they're <clears throat> working to identify impact on the dolphins uh, on the black in the black sea this impact on the of the war and this is rare species of animals and they are in the red book of ukraine also uh it's um uh we have impact on our forest systems and ecosystems it's fires uh in the forest and it's also a pollution of the air uh from toxic gases during the explosions and uh it's also pollution of the air uh because uh russian forces they uh against the international um uh chemical weapons Con convention they are using also um uh gases like chlorpicrine uh against our soldiers um yeah and there's like uh, just an example of burns burn steep in um um and Kamyanska Sich National Nature Park. Uh, and uh, we uh, also have a pollution not just because of uh, unexploded objects, we have a contamination with remnants of explosive objects uh, from di in different parts of our country. And uh, also pollution of the environment with uh, remains, remains of destruction and military operations. It's uh, 
uh, yeah, it's a, it's a ton of uh, burn materials and unburned materials. And for example, uh, here on this on the uh, on two pictures, you can see a uh, epicenter. Uh, it's a huge supermarket of building materials. It's like our classical example. And um, we also took samples from that place. And here's some results. Uh, it's also uh, there is also a lot of uh, heavy metals, and uh, uh, they're like much higher than uh, much higher than uh, maximum permissible concentrations, and it's just a part of the result. And it's um, and it's dangerous because during the windy weather, it can be just spread uh, with like a like a, a small thin. Um, uh, parts and also during the rain weather, it also can migrate to the uh, ground and soil water. Uh, so it's uh, and we still have a uh, tons of these materials. Sometimes, um, if like uh, these pictures for better understanding, it's just some uh, scale of the problem. And this is a picture from also a burnt food uh, warehouse in Ukraine, and this is like Bakhmut. Um, you can see the scale of this uh, 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 remains of destruction, and uh, yeah, it's uh, like just cities, completely complete cities and villages which were destroyed with uh, no people um, in, in them. And uh, we will also have um, this uh, this problem in the future. We'll already have it. And uh, some of uh, us, and there is a uh, discussion already exists how it how these territories will look like in the future, like some uh, demilitarized zone, like in between South and Northern Korea, or just like a red zone in France, uh, which are completely closed because of uh, destruction and uh, pollution with uh, unexploded object and chemical pollution. <clears throat> and also, I will represent the third part of our research. It's uh, um, at catastrophe on Kahovka Reservoir and the revival of Veliki Luh. Uh, from uh, um, organization, we're from uh, like after catastrophe in 2023 uh, on Kahovka Dam, we're providing researches in this region and we are working in, uh, on the territory of uh, Kaminsky Sich National Park, Zaporizhia region, and also uh, we have a, a yeah, expedition in Kherson region. Uh, so, and uh, here you can see uh, consequences um, after the catastrophe on, uh, on this uh, object. Uh, uh, we understand that it's an artificial um, uh, res water reservoir, but uh, during 70 years, uh, it was like, yeah, during this, uh, during this period, like a uh, new nature ecosystem uh, formed on these places. And uh, because of catastrophe, it's completely, uh, it's, it, wa it was completely destroyed uh, by the catastrophe and thousands of, um, uh, thousands of uh, living organism were died because of this catastrophe it's like crayfish fish amphibians uh, nature vegetation and uh that's why we consider uh and we have a discussion about issue of ecocide on these territories and it's yeah some pictures of like dead crayfish and cracks on the bottom of uh, this water reservoir like dead fish uh their skeletons and uh, and also condition of the ecosystem in National Nature Park. It's like one of the base of uh, of the Kahovka uh, Water Reservoir. How it looked like at that uh, at that period. Uh, and uh, it was um, yeah, there were a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, discussions how this territory will look like uh what will happen will it be like dust uh, storms or it will be a lot of invasive uh, species uh, uh on this place but it was a uh, uh yeah nature decided uh, in a different way and this uh this place completely covered by the willow uh, and here it's a picture from 2023 you can see the uh young willow um like um formation like beginning of the formation of young willow forest and it's also interesting uh to compare these territories with old maps from um 18th century and you can see uh you can see even uh the same on these pictures better you can see even the same uh structure or water system and um 
Yeah, and uh, so uh, for com for better comparison, uh, you can see the situation July 2023 and September 2023. Uh, it's a process of nature restoration of this territory. Uh, and um, yeah, October 2023 and also May 2024, it's pictures from the Parisian region. And you can see it's, yeah, it's really impressive. Uh, it's like a green sea on this place. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, and that's why uh, that's why uh, appeared uh, also discussions about the scenarios of uh, the development of these territories. Should it should we restore the uh, dam, or should we find uh, uh, should we find something between uh, <clears throat> scenario like small uh, small dams, or should it be completely a nature protection territory, and we should leave it for nature. And you can see um, this uh, place in uh, October 2024. It's our last expedition in last month to this territory. Uh, to, um, and it's like, um, it's natural processes. It's autumn period in this place. And um, you can see, um, yeah, we just are uh, measuring this, uh, these trees, uh, young trees, and some of them already higher than five meters. It's yeah, uh, very firm, really formation of the young uh, willow forest and uh, yeah, but still some uh, pictures um, from the Parisian region because it's um, uh, some some territories just opened uh, from the under the water. Yeah, um, uh, all our results we are publishing on our website. Uh, there. Um, open and uh, sometimes they're like uh, on in English language and Ukrainian language, you can find them. Um, and um, yeah, please, uh, you're welcome. And um, yeah, here is, uh, it's a huge work from our team and our organization. Thank you so much for your attention. Дякую, пані Катерина, за вашу роботу і роботу вашої команди. Uh, dear Katerina, for your work and work of your team. Це насправді великий вклад в подальше притягнення Росії до відповідальності. Uh, this is the huge effort to uh, ask Russia for the responsibility of their action. Я хочу зазначити, що це, напевно, вперше в світі проводиться така робота. Uh, I would like to mention that this is first time in the world such work is doing. Хочу запросити до слова Соломію Баран, юрисконсульт екології права людини. І Соломія, будь ласка, дайте відповідь нам на питання. А як юридично? Можна притягнути Росію до відповідальності за ці злочини. Соломія, please uh, reply to the question: how legally we can ask Russia for responsibility for their actions? First, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for being here, for coming, and for your interest in this topic. And uh, thanks to my colleagues, we have already heard about the horrors caused to Ukrainian environment by Russian aggression. And honestly, that's one of the reasons, one of the million reasons why it's so painful to see them, their pavilion here. But while, you know, war ex still exists and we are still fighting. And the term of ecocide is so often mentioned in the context of war. So today I'd like to talk about this term and its application. Next slide, please. So let's start from the international perspective. So the first and the main thing that I have to mention is that ecocide is not recognized as the international crime, it's a separate international crime, according to the Rome Statute. But um, the Article 8 of the Rome Statute includes three provisions that could be potentially used in the cases of environmental damage during the war. 
The first of them is connected to widespread long-term and severe environmental damages, disproportionate to military advantage. Second is about targeting civilian objects. And third is related to widespread destruction or seizure of enemy property. Uh, it was already mentioned that we have no practice of the ICC in this kind of cases. And we have a lot of problems here. There are a lot of reasons for them, but I'll mention key challenges in applying the Rome Statute. The first thing is the, the fact that Rome Statute is about the person. It's individual responsibility, not about the state, but about the state's leaders. So it's very important for us also. And the first challenge is the fact that we have no consensus about the status of environment. Is the environment civilian object, property, or an independent legal entity according to the Rome Statute? The second is about the Article 8 to B4, because this article uses terms like wide, long term, severe, and it's so hard in practical field to use these terms without concrete criteria. It's so hard for prosecutor bodies, for the environmental inspection, et cetera, et cetera. And third, it's about the principle of proportionality, because it's so hard to use this principle to, and say whether the environmental damages, environmental harm was proportionate, proportional to the concrete war situation. So, of course, uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine so highlighted these problems, but uh, that's our this problem not only for Ukraine. Of course, Ukraine has to be a pioneer here to advocate some changes, but that's a problem for the whole world because every country could be affected. So we have to do something here. And now about Ukrainians' problems, problems and not only problems. Uh, next slide, please. And next slide, please. One more. Yes, thank you. About the criminal court of Ukraine. It could be so, a little bit surprising for our international colleagues, but we already have the crime of ecocide in our criminal court. I have a lot of concerns about this formulation, as you can see on the slide, but I had to say, I have to say that it's very important for us that we have this crime and we have something to work with that's very important and according to the criminal court of ukraine ecocide is a mass destruction of flora and fauna poisoning the atmosphere or water resources as well as the commission of other actions that may cause ecological disaster and it's punishable by imprisonment of a term of 8 to 15 years next slide please of course, we have a lot of challenges here. I wouldn't stop on them so deeply today, but I'll be more than happy to discuss them, all of them in private conversations. I'll just briefly mention them. That's undefined terms in correct legislation, difficulty in determining completion of the crime and in distinguishing ecocide from the war crimes, and also the high level of the risk of misapplying this article. Next slide, please. Yes, and of course, we have a lot of challenges and problems of investigating ecocide. Some of them are like more institutional, because I think no no country, there is no country all over the world which would be ready nowadays to investigate ecocide in the right way. And some of them are caused because of the war, and I think that there are the main of them, such as widespread mining and the occupation of the territories. Next slide, please. So what did we have at the start of the full-scale war? Environmental damaging, a lot of people talking about the ecocide, nobody having like clear vision what is it and how to use it, no international recognition, no criteria, no practice of the ICC in environmental cases. That's why our team, team of lawyers and environmental scientists 
decided to start our work from the early beginning and to create some criteria for this crime. I think that's so useful because now we have the possibility to say yes, here we can talk about the ecocide and in this case we don't have such possibility. Of course, we are still working on them. We are so open to any discussion, to all of your proposals, comments, ideas. But now we can share it with you. I would also stop on each of them, but I'd like to pay your attention to the fact that that every of these criteria use so concrete terms, so concrete time measure. You can see concrete per persons, concrete documents, like you can see a population to less than 20%. Monitoring over three years. Biotopes include in the UNESCO World Heritage List or Bern Convention Resolution 4. So as for me, as for a lawyer, it's so useful to have such a concrete material to work with. And now our prosecution, if this criteria would be adopted, we have such a clear vision and our prosecutor bodies could have this vision, how to work with this crime and in which way we could like develop our investigations. Next slide, please. And uh, based on these uh, criteria, we decided to work on the term of ecocide. On this slide, you can see some part of our team who were working on these criteria so in this field, some scientists, lawyers, experts. And what about the, the term of ecocide? Of course, we are still working on it, but I'll, we now, for now, we propose to describe ecocide as a deliberate act of a person who may cause damage to biotope, as a result of which this biotope on the territory of Ukraine loses its ability to self-recover. Of course, we are so open to discussion, but that's like a project version. I think is that this way, in this position, it could, could work, yeah. And qualifying characteristic of such crime should be, to our minds, to our opinions, a prior conspiracy of group of people committing on the national protected area, committed by a person previously convicted of criminal offenses against the environment, and committed by official using his or her official status. Also, we are so open for your proposals or discussion. And as I think I'm out of time, so it's very important to make some conclusion. I think that all of us have to understand the importance of investigating and working on this field. And I should mention that all the efforts of the corps will be or would be in vain if wars, which uncontrollably and destructively affect the environment, are not stopped. It's crucial to include a link to the state of war in climate agreements also, there should be clear consequences for the ecocide as it damages the climate and undermines all the efforts to protect it. Thank you, and we'll be more than happy to answer for your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Solomia. Насправді далеко не відходьте. У мене є запитання. Да. Thank you, Solomia. I have a question to you. Сьогодні на всіх заходах запитують, які виклики. Можете сказати, от, що найскладніше в вашій роботі? Тому що насправді презентацію, а, яка складність? Що найважче? What are the biggest challenges in your work? Because we see that this is the first time in the history of the world such actions are doing. So please tell me what is the hardest and what is the biggest challenges and what activities you should do? Yes. Yes. Thank you for, so much for this question. I would joke that the hardest thing is the fact that we are the first people who are doing it. But uh, honestly, it's so hard to find this balance between other crimes and ecocide, war crimes and ecocide, other offenses against environment and ecocide. Because uh, ecocide is so, so, so horrible harm. Uh, it's so horrible crime. So we have to find this line where ecocide is and where it's not. And also, I think in practical field, it would be the hardest to document, to document the environmental damages, to calculate it and to make some documentation on this issue. Thank you. 
Ну, питання в залі і будуть. Do you have any questions, dear colleagues? Yeah. Please, I will give you the mic. Um, my name is Jamie Harvey. Uh, this is a great presentation. <clears throat> you mentioned that uh, you guys are the first to be doing this sort of work. Have you received any collaboration from other international bodies or other um, countries to bring ecocide to international recognition within the room? Yes, thank you so much for this question. Uh, of course, our organization has a lot of support all over the world, especially from the ELO network. Maybe you have heard about it before. And also, we are so we are looking for new partners, so we are so open to to communication. Thank you. Також я хочу пані Катерині задати питання, які виклики у вашій роботі? Uh, and Katerina, the same question to you. What the, are the biggest challenges in your work? Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the question. Uh, it's uh, a difficult work to see a lot of destructions and how the war uh, destroy uh, our country. Um, so it's um, difficult to go and see this, uh, yeah, like um, destroyed villages, completely destroyed and... Uh, when you see this like a uh, ghosts uh, and uh, it's uh, it's difficult to see a lot of uh, like uh, like dead organisms uh, consequences of the catastrophe and uh, sometimes uh, some people asking me about like positive effects of the war on the environment but i'm like always talking about the price you know uh, the, the price is so high it's uh, it's a yeah thousands of uh yeah deaths and uh yeah our soldiers and uh yeah i am uh we are just uh you know uh it's uh we are we are trying to do uh, our work in a better best way uh because we know that our soldiers they're uh it's yeah it's um they're doing in incredible work and uh we are uh, we are very grateful to them that uh, we still still can be alive, and uh, we just uh, doing things that we can do. And uh, if we can fight, we can work with uh, our our brains and uh, use it to also to protect uh, the environment and health of our of our civil like of our uh, civilians. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, I think it's uh, most uh, difficult things and uh, most difficult thing uh, it's uh, when you are a scientist and when you understand from the scientific point of view uh, the scale of the damage when you understand the uh, consequences and uh, when you understand this uh, dangerous and uh, how many toxic elements inside of the soils and uh, when you understand that you will be uh, there will be no opportunity to go to that uh, territories to the forest or uh, uh, to the river and because of uh, these scenes and and how many efforts should be uh, done to restore uh, some ecosystems and that some of them uh, we will never see again because they are completely destroyed uh, burned and uh, yeah just uh, yeah, uh, damage it uh, so so much that we will not be able to um, rebuild them. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to add something, because uh, for me personally, Katerina and other my colleagues who we visit this uh, damaged national parks, national protected areas, damaged territories, they are my personal heroes, because a lot of times they were attacked by Russians. They, are, they were facing this so dangerous situation, but they are still doing it. Because thank you from, from this point. <laughs> thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Katya. My personal gratitude. Great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your work. It's very important for Ukraine. So let's thank our speakers.